Okay, I've, I've previously done this with uh, no audio because I've got a northern accent. Um, but uh, yeah, it was only just a quick getting round to it so that I, uh, I had something there on my website. But now, as you can hear, I have audio so I can explain things a little bit better rather than you having a second guess what I'm actually doing. I can talk you through it. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to show you Armitage. Uh, we've got a, a very vulnerable Windows 2000 server and we've got my backtrack install. Um, so the two different operating systems just because they're running on my screen um, it doesn't make a difference you know remotely over a network or uh, over whatever um, that you have permission to do so is important as well um, uh, you know I'll, I'll get your own um, weak copy of Windows 2000 you know if you can find any old IT departments it'll give you a, a, one of their old copies that they're not going to use anymore you can turn it into a virtual machine and attack it so um, these these are both on the same network, so they can talk to each other. Um, if I just look in here, uh, one and two, one six eight, one and five, and 0.6. So cool. Um, what I need to do to run Armitage, well, Armitage is basically um, a GUI for Metasploit. That's basically all it is. So if you have trouble with Metasploit or navigating around Metasploit at the command line, or you're learning it, or you just don't want to use the command line. Um, Armitage is, is a, a pretty cool tool. Um, it'll run on any operating system that supports Java, but you do need a, a database and obviously an instance of uh, Metasploit. So let's start our database up. On Backtrack, it's in um, etc init d uh, mysql, and you can go start. You can do stop, start, restart, or type the wrong command in there, and it'll give you the options. Uh, just load that up. Cool, so our daemon's running now, that's what the D stands for right there. Uh, we also need to start off our uh, Metasploit to allow Armitage to connect to it. So uh, that's in Pentests Exploits Framework 3. Um, you should always update your Metasploit. I updated it last night. Uh, but yeah, MSF update. MSF update. That'll update you. That little Windows 2000 box looking all scared over there. That was an attempt at a joke. So. <laughs> uh, let's get rid of that. I won't install these updates yet. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a guide to Evil Grade shortly as well, which is um, very naughty, but that's not about today. So we're up to date. So you can see here, um, there's a data Armitage folder with the Armitage.jar in there. If you do a apt get install Armitage on Backtrack, it will install it for you. But the the one coming down with Metasploit is the one that we should really be using. So let's go there. Uh, sorry, let's start off the um, MSF RPCD first. So if we do a list dot slash MSF RPCD, and then we need. Uh, this command uh, F U P T capital U capital P username MSF password capital P uh, test and the tab is basic. One second, my phone is ringing. All right, cool. Phone call over with um, dot slash MSF RPCD minus F minus capital U username minus P password minus T basic. I'm not sure what the F is for. I should really find out. Anyway, let's run that. So, um, starting on 0 .0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0.0 0 0.0.0 means all interfaces, if you don't already know. Uh, now, let's go into uh, Pentest Exploit Framework again, free. Uh, data Armitage. That's right, it is. <laughs> So to move into a directory, type cd for change directory, <laughs> uh, and then we'll go dot slash uh, armitage. Cool. So uh, we want we our username was msf and our password was test. This is my local version of Backtrack that won't see the internet, so I don't mind you guys seeing my password. If you want to be cool with this stuff, uh, make sure SSL is on. If 
you want to be cool with this stuff, you can ha use remote hosts, like remote databases uh, and remote instances of Metasploit to, to connect to. And they don't have to be on the same server either. But, you know, obviously speed is an issue. So, however you like. I think the idea would be nice to have your databases of your penetration testing team, uh, you know, all in one place. So it was username uh, to the to the pen tester at a remote database. And then if anything really bad happened, you always have a... Yeah, you know, there's governance over the database. Other people can see what you've been doing, so on and so forth. Anyway, let's connect this using MySQL. So if it doesn't crash before you get this bit, and usually it won't crash unless you've done something wrong, it's a good sign that it's working fine. And you get a little doing a secure socket there. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, there's my old there's my old guide. <laughs> Still on the same IP address. Uh, stack. Thank you. Right, let's get rid of all this hosts, clear hosts. Go away. So, so this is Armitage. You you may recognise these directories here in Metasploit. It's quite a nice way to navigate around them. It's also cool that you've got a Metasploit uh, session running down here, console sort of connected down here. And you you know if you do if you do get lost, you can always just click these places and see whereabouts the information is that you need. Or you can do a uh, search for specific MS or whatever's or vulnerabilities if you know their names CVE names uh, so if I want that one just double click it and then pick a host anyway we're going to pick on this little windows box over here uh, so let's do a little nmap scan and quick OS detect Oops. sorry nmap scan quick OS detect and let's go 192.168.0.6 No, that's its IP address. So, uh, in the new version of Armitage, you get nmap output. In the previous versions, you, you didn't get it in there. You'd get it in one of your shells behind it. Uh, what's that saying? No collaboration server is present. Oh, that's okay. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, your errors will um, echo out in the background as well. Cool. So the MAPS scan's complete. It's very uh, lots of open ports. Um, some, you know. But, uh, so what we can do is we've got lots of open ports, uh, and then if we go to hosts, uh, sorry, attacks, and then find attack by port, it will align known vulnerabilities to ports to the target, and then it'll give you a list of possible ways to compromise the machine. Uh, so you just go. Attacks, find attacks by port. You can also do it by vulnerability. So if you know that it is MSF RPC running, um, it will look at the it will look at it knowing that it's an RPC daemon and align its RPC exploits for Windows 2000 or uh, or exploits that would affect Windows 2000 to the IP address. Um, it's that box pump pops up and tells us to right click on the target now, and we've got a new menu called attacks. So we've got a list of things that could possibly get us into the Windows 2000 box um, and stuff to enumerate information and, and generally wiggle our way in. I haven't set anything up really, so I'm just going to run with the DCOM, which I know works. Um, Pre-populates everything, so you don't have to set all the variables with Metasploit, uh, Lhost, Rhost, uh, Lport, so on and so forth. I always use reverse connection for good measure. It's a good way to get past firewalls. I don't have firewall running on this at the moment, but just... You know, it's good practice. So if we launch that and then this goes red, that means that we've taken that box. Uh, I'd really like to hear some sound effects when it when the little bits of electric kick in, <laughs> something like that. You know. Anyway, we now have that box, and obviously you can see that nothing visibly happens over here. First thing you want to do really is uh, let's go to interpreter. So this is our interpreter shell now. We can do whatever we want. First thing we want to do is migrate uh, to Notepad. Cool. It makes the uh, makes my, my the communication between uh, the remote host and the inf the now compromised host a little bit more stable. If we actually look in Task Manager now, we should see Notepad. Uh, where are we? There we are. Um, and obviously we've got the process ID that was given to us when it migrated it. Anyway, so what can we do? Um, let's get back in here. You got. You can do everything that you can do in a normal interpreter session. Um, dump hashes. Let's have them. Cheers. So it's telling us to go into view credentials. And there we are. We've got the administrator account, um, and we've got all the other stuff. What is that? 
I'm not sure what loot does. Interesting. Very good. Anyway, uh, we can do VNC. So if we wanted to do some very naughty stuff, like uh, wind up the guy that's running the computer, VNC um, exploit works really, really cool. It, all the exploit code sits in the memory, so it, it tries its best not to get written to the hard disk, uh, or doesn't get written to the hard disk. So forensically, it's quite difficult to um, to figure out what the hell's gone on unless you take the memory out and analyze it. You know, if you know you're being hacked, you pull the power out of your computer. Don't you don't shut it down. You kill the power, and then you pull the memory out and do some boring analysis on that. Anyway, look at this, I've got the screen now. So let me cancel that and then let me have a mess around. So you can do like, uh, this is a, a VNC. Um, obviously I have no permission to do this on that other machine as far as the computer goes. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, explore, browse files, um, screenshots. I can have a screenshot of all this. Yeah, you know I mean? I can do whatever I want. Um, and it's really cool for learning Metasploit as well. Uh, hmm, what else can we do? Um, I won't do the pivotal stuff because I don't have any more machines and if I load up any more virtual machines my computers will die. Um, yeah, it's cool. And if you just want to do a normal interpret shell, you can you can have it there. You can do all your stuff. Cool. Um, let me just murder this computer by going to uh, processes. Let's kill uh, that one. Oops. Alright, that's that's it. Game over. Thanks.